How's you going boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. And guess what? We're going to boil some sap today. Finally. Yeah, it's been a long old haul. But anyways, we're going to boil some sap. Yesterday I was out and I got about done 11 litres of sap. And uh, all together that makes about, I figured around pretty near 39 litres. I'd like to have 40 to start. But there's probably going to be some more sap on the trees today if I get out this afternoon to pick it up. But anyways, we have enough to start. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to gear up the sugar shack, set it all up and get ready to start boiling. And uh, I'll take you along and you can watch. Look, look at those big, I don't know whether you can see them, flakes. Biggest corn flakes coming down right now. Big snow, little snow though. That's what they say. So yesterday I ran extension cord out to my sugar shack so we could have some light. Wow, that makes it pretty bright. Anyway, come on in here, I want to show you something. So I think I'll give you a little tour of my sugar shack here before we get started. First of all, I have uh, this hood right here. I had a buddy of mine make me that hood and I put that right over top of my pan. In my pan, as you can see, it's not an elaborate system. It's a stainless steel pan, about 18 inches, 16 to 18 inches in, in squareness. And then I just have that on a, an old propane burner. Well, excuse me. Just a propane burner. And I use a 30 pound propane tank. And that 30 pound tank right there will last me, oh, probably two days of burning, so that's not so bad. And then the shack itself is probably only 6 by 8, so uh, I have a little table in the corner and my chair where I sit and watch the sap boil. Okay, so that's basically what the sugar shack looks like. Now I'm going to set up here and uh, put some uh, sap in the pan there and uh, start heating it up. If you look at the pan, I just want to talk about this. If you look at the pan, it's pretty uh, brown in there. You can see that. That's a uh, staining that takes place from the sap boiling in the uh, stainless steel pan. And uh, uh, you'll just have to trust me on this one. It's been well washed and well scrubbed to get that brown out of there. But in the sap, there's what's called, uh, well, a lot of people refer to it as sugar sand. Sugar sand or niter, I think is the proper term for it. Now I don't know all the science behind it, or the chemistry of it, but uh, niter is naturally occurring in the sap as it comes out of the ground, and the more minerals that's in the soil where the trees are growing, the more chances you have of having niter in your sap. And the niter forms like a white crust on the pan, and when you scrub that crust away, you end up with a brown tinge, or I do anyways. But anyway, I'm going to set that pan up there, put some sap in it, light up the burner, and we're going to start. Alright, we're going to start, our, start the burner, so i got my propane bottle on, so I turn on the propane, light her up. Then I put my pan on, just like that, light her up under the hood here, and then, My first jug of sap. The first four liters of sap in the pan for 2019. Rock on, George. Now, uh, This is not my first rodeo, right? So I have this little stick. In this, oh, this is the finishing pan stick. Here's my measuring tool. Pretty impressive, eh? It's just a piece of uh, round stock. And I've got a couple of notches on it here at the bottom. So uh, those are measurements. So I put them in the pan like that. And this first notch is four liters in the pan. Second notch is eight liters. So I like to put 8 liters in the pan and maintain the level in the pan between 
four and eight liters. So I'm going to put another four liters in. So this sap is pretty cold. It's going to take a bit of time to get it to boil, of course. But we've got lots of time. So I check my measurement. Eight liters. That's what I like to see. And now I'm going to get down here and turn the heat up. I don't run it wide open, but I run it so that it's uh, pretty good heat on it. Now, uh, when you're doing maple syrup, of course, temperature is important. So I got this little thing geared up. This is a thermocouple. So I plug the thermocouple in. Right now, in the sugar shack, it's 28 degrees Fahrenheit. 28 or minus 0 0.02 Celsius. See that? Anyway, I just stick my probe in there, and you can see the temperature of the, uh, the sap starting to go up. It says 104. We're up to 135. It's been boiling there for about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes. Not boiling. The heat's been on for about 10 minutes. We're up to 135. So, uh, one of the important things about boiling sap is that you don't, once you get the sap boiling, you don't like to kill the boil because when you kill the boil and then start to boil again, that's when these niters start to show their ugly face. And uh, that makes uh, the syrup kind of cloudy at the bottom and whatnot after a while if it sits. Uh, professional uh, maple syrup operations, of course, they have osmosis systems, reverse osmosis systems. They have uh, you know, lots of different things like that to make their sap certainly uh, more suitable for, uh, say, selling in a store, where I would never sell my sap in the store because although it tastes good and there's nothing wrong with it, it doesn't look good when there's when it's cloudy. But anyway, uh, the cloudiness doesn't really bother you a whole lot. But it just, it's not uh, pleasing to the eye. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is when you boil sap, you don't want the boil to die. You don't want to kill the boil by adding more sap to it. Uh, the less times you kill the boil, the better your sap will be. So what I do is I try to set uh, what I call a preheater. It's not really a preheater uh, per se. Uh, if you watch maple syrup videos on uh, the tube, you'll find that guys with with big evaporators, they'll have a big, uh, like a pan, a fluted pan perhaps, but they'll have a sap preheater in the back of their pan, which warms the sap somewhat before it goes into the pan to start boiling. That way, you don't kill the boil in your pan. So what I do is, I'm not as elaborate as these guys with the big uh, systems, just because I don't want to be big like that. I prefer just a small sit, uh, setup that I have. But anyway, I have this, this bucket, just an old stainless steel bucket. We used to boil corn in it, on this burner actually. And I put a hole in it and tried to make a waterproof bung with a little valve. Can you see that right there? The lighting is not the best. But anyway, this little valve, I'll shut that right now. That little valve right there has this tube on it. And I set this pan up on the corner of the shelf. You can't really see it there, but up here. And the heat from the burner tends to migrate up this way and heat up the pan a little bit. So what it does, really all it does, is it takes the chill off the sap. So I'll set my sap in here and let it drip into the pan on the burner once it starts to boil. So I'm going to set this pan up right now. So I set my pan right there in the corner. And then I made these uh, hooks to try to hold my... Uh, and then I fill my pan, my pot. So 
So here's sap. I had this sap sitting outside all night and it didn't get down below zero last night, although it's shown below zero this morning. But, uh, most all the ice is melting under it. So I still have ice in that jug, so I'll set that outside and let that melt because I'm sure there's some sugar content in that ice. Underneath, I'm just going to go by the old-fashioned method of I measure the temperature. So we do this for about another eight or nine hours. Vapor coming out of the stack at the sugar shack. 